Now, when it comes to sex, your kids are always going to find out about it one way or another, and it won't always be from a reliable source. Parents have to take charge and provide your kids with the right information. Now, you can avoid embarrassment and potential awkwardness with the help of Sharon Witt, the author of Teen Talk series Boy Talk and Girl Talk. Please welcome Sharon to the couch. Sharon, we've got children, you've got a young one, Georgie, yes. but we've been through it, we've grown up, we know how difficult it is, but why do parents find it so difficult to talk to their kids about sex? Well, I think not every parent does, but I think it, it is a little bit of a taboo subject, and for some parents it is just downright scary. Mm. And it's like, when do I have that talk with my child, and you know, and is it just supposed to be the talk? You know, do we actually just have one talk, and we go, right, on the 25th of June, that's the day we're going to sit down, <laughs> yes. you know, and we'll cover off every, yes. cover everything, and you know, when is a that good, talk's coming up. When is a good time to broach it, because I was reading that, uh, you know, girls are hitting puberty earlier, Absolutely. they're becoming more sexually active mm. earlier, so when do we start broaching the yeah, subject? Yeah, I think you really have to gauge it with your children. I mean, there are some children who are, you know, girls who are going through getting their periods as young as grade four, grade five. Oh. It's really, really young and it does happen in every school. And so I think you need to just keep an eye on your own child. And, and when they start to ask questions and get a bit curious, um, certainly a lot of information does get passed around the school ground. Yeah. And a lot of it's misinformation. So children will actually be a little bit concerned about something that may not actually be true. So I think it's good to start those conversations from an early age. Age, probably mm. around about you know the 10, 11 year old. And just age. to get to the nitty gritty of it, Sharon, yeah. because we're not going to try and make every make, cover off everything mm. in one go. You could start talking about pubic hair as an opening what a game. Lovely but opener. Isn't that gorgeous? <laughs> so and why it's there? Why, what's happening with the hormones well, I don't know in the body? Why it's there. <laughs> <laughs> that's me, kid. It's just, just sprouts like our father. Going on there. So that would be a good start. Couldn't it to go? Okay, it's not too scary. It's not too confronting. Yeah. I actually wouldn't start with pubic hair because I reckon they just run a mile. I would actually just start with you know our bodies are going to start to go through some changes at some stage, and you might notice it then. You know, you don't want to go up and go. Oh, I've noticed you're changing a little bit. <laughs> but you just want to sort of say, you know, your body's going to start going through some changes at some stage, and probably oh. the first thing your child would do is go la 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 la. I don't yeah. want to talk oh. about it. But just start an ongoing conversation. It's don't just say we're going to have a talk tomorrow. Because yeah. they won't sleep. They'll be like, it's such an <laughs> awkward phase for them. You it want is. to help them so much because it's just so confronting for them. And we remember, if you can remember what it was like for you, mm. and you know, I had a certain experience that I decided I'm actually going to be quite open and honest with my children. So I'm trying to do that. And I've actually taught puberty for the last 20 years to my year seven. So I've had a bit of experience. So mm. it wasn't so scary for me to talk to my own so children. So if they fail puberty as a subject, it's my fault. Does that mean that they don't get to have a bra? That's right. Can we talk about um, some of your advice is really good that you often say, okay, let's parents get in their head, let's talk about the birds and the bees, yeah. and they'll talk about sex and say, this is what a, a husband and wife do, or a man and a woman do. When a mummy and a daddy love each other very, very much, much um, and want to have a baby. And what yeah. I loved is that you suggest, well, yes, that's true, but you also shouldn't shy away from saying, a lot of people have sex because it's enjoyable mm. and it's pleasurable. Should we be saying that? In the, when they're that young? Well, not probably when they're that young, but I think it's just good to have a conversation, not sort of shy away from it, but just talk to kids, give them the, the basics, yeah. and then sort of leave it at that, you right. know? I don't think we need to talk about it too much, but, um, the, you know, there's some, some research that people say, oh, if you talk about it too much, they're all going to be doing it. Well, that's actually not the case. Right. Um, but I think it's just to be wise and just to have conversations with the children, and as they have questions, encourage them to be able to come and speak to you, because a lot of stuff, a lot of banter happens around the schoolyard, and they, the students will often think everyone's doing it because everyone is talking about it. Mm. But in actual fact, they're not. But what if it is? A, I mean, a lot of people get con really confronting questions about oral sex, all of those things. Mm. Should parents answer them truthfully? Well, I, I think they can if they have that sort of relationship where they... Like some parents, there's no way. They just... They, they wouldn't want to talk about it. But there's also some really helpful websites out there too that kids can actually go to. There's a lot of, you know, websites maybe, maybe for children. Maybe Googling sex. Oh, no. no. So, what no. Do, so what do you do if, you, if your kid comes to you with quite a confronting question? Let's say, um, what is this in terms mm. of, say, an oral sex technique? Yeah. What, should you, what should you do? If you don't feel comfortable talking about it, where should you direct them? So go ask your father. No. <laughs> or you just say, look, that's a great... <laughs> I can't believe you just said that. <laughs> ask anybody. Oh, I meant like...
like, you know, just in general questions, you know, you, you just say, go ask your father. Right. I wasn't, in, you know, insinuating okay. anything there. Um, but basically, just saying, look, it's a great question. Right. You know, it's a great question. Um, I don't think, do you say, say thank you for asking. Don't just freak out and go, oh, I don't want to talk about it. Say yeah. thanks for asking. Look, I'm really glad you came to me about this. That's but. really important. But um, try and give them the simplest answer, if you can. I mean, I have to do this with students sometimes and, and answer questions. You just give them the basics. Mm -hmm. Don't go into too much. Um, and, you know, if you're really, really concerned about it and, and you don't want to sh talk about it, then give them some options of people they could speak to. Okay. You know, often people will have um, other adults in their life that they might be able to talk about. Or throw them your book and say, go and read this. Well, that's why I did it, so I wouldn't have to talk to my own children about puberty. <laughs> I just wrote the book and said, don't ask me, here you on, go. On that question, um, Sharon, you've got a girl book and a guy mm. book. Is there much of a difference between what you've got to tell girls and guys about? No, but I think it's really good for the guys. Like with both books, I've, I've actually given a little section for the boys about what happens to the girls and same with the girls because mm. I think they often don't understand what's happening for each other and it's really good for them to understand what's, what they're going through with puberty mm. as well. And give, um, me, give me a look at the blue book. Gentlemen, Sharon Witt. And good news. Everyone in our audience today will get their own copies of Boy Talk Yay! and Girl Talk. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Coming up, the chef with world leaders in the cream of Hollywood among his highly satisfied customers. It's Thursday and you're watching The Circle. <laughs>